Okay, so for our multifamily calculations, again using the standard method, really all we have to deal with extra is um, more appliances. So that's where that 75% deal comes into play quite a bit, right? So it says a fixed appliance demand load is determined by applying 75% of the demand factor of the nameplate rating of four or more appliances that are fastened in place, such as disposals, dishwashers, trash compactors, water heaters. The fixed appliance demand factors for three or less appliances is 100%. So typically what we're going to see is on multifamily, we're going to have more than four appliances, right? So that's where we tend to use that 75% is when we're doing a multifamily calculation. So let's take a look at the question here. All right, it says, what is the fixed appliance demand load for the service and feeder, for the feeder and service for a 10 unit multifamily building that contains a 1200 volt, volt amp dishwasher, <coughs> a 900 volt amp disposal, and a 4,500 watt water heater in each unit. So basically in each unit I've got a total of 6,600, right? 1,200 plus 900 plus 4,500. If I do that times 10, that gives me 66,000. And obviously I've got more than four units at that point, um, or more than four appliances. So I've got a total of uh, 30 appliances, right? So we can do that at 75% there. So we're going to do our 6,600 times 10 units times 75%. That's 49,500. So real simple as far as that's concerned. All we got to do is remember, hey, if I've got four or more appliances, we're going to do that at 75%. Now, what's our fixed appliance demand load for a 20-unit multifamily building that has a 1,200 volt amp dishwasher? a 900 volt amp disposal, and a 4,500 watt water heater in each unit. I'll let you go ahead and do that one, okay? I'll give you a minute. Go ahead and push pause. All right, let's see how you did here. So we've got 1,200 plus 900 plus 4,500. That's a total of 6,600. Now we got 20 units, right? So 6,600 times 20 units um, times 75%, that's going to give us a total of 99,000 volt amps. All right? It's real simple. It's just uh, the total volt amp demand load in one unit times our number of units and then times our 75% demand factor. All right, let's take a look at our dryers. Now remember, we still have, even in multifamily, a minimum rating of 5,000 watts on our dryers, okay? So when we take a look at our 10 4 kilowatt dryers, we really have to treat this as 10 5 kilowatt dryers, all right? And we're going to use table 220.54. 220.54, and that is going to be found on page 77. Page 77, top of the right-hand column, we got our demand factors for household electric, electric clothes dryers. And remember, 5,000 is the minimum per unit. We have 10 units. If we go down on our number of dryers in our table, we go down to 10, it says, give me 50% demand factor. So we're going to take 50% of 50,000, not 40,000, because each a uh, 4 kilowatt dryer needs to be counted as a 5 kilowatt dryer. So I got 50,000 times 50%, that's 25,000 watts or 25 kilowatts. Okay? Pretty straightforward. We just need to remember uh, that 5,000 is the minimum even when we're talking about multifamily. Why don't you guys do this one? What's our demand load for 10 5.5 kilowatt dryers? You guys go ahead and work that one out. All right, let's see how you did on that. So I've got my 5.5 kilowatts, that's 5,500 watts per unit times 10 units, that's 55,000 watts. I take that times 50%, that gives me 27.5 kilowatts or 27,500 watts. Okay, so those are straightforward. The problem is, is when we get a little bit deeper on the uh, table, 
down past 11 units, right? Now I gotta figure out what is my percentage. So here under number of dryers, 12 to 23, it says 47% minus 1% for each dryer exceeding 11. Okay, so on that, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take a look at that. And the question is, our demand load for 20 5.5 kilowatt dryers. First thing we got to do is figure out what our percentage is. So it said, give me 47%. Minus 1% for dryers exceeding 11, right? 47% minus 1% for dryers exceeding 11. How many dryers do we have exceeding 11? 20 minus 11 is 9. So it's really going to be 47% minus 9% or 38%. So we're going to use a 38% demand factor on there, okay? So 38% demand factor. And so we're going to take a look at our original uh, problem. It says 25.5 kilowatt dryers. We'll call those 5,500, right? I, I do 5,500 times 20. That's 110,000. So my 110,000 times my 38% is going to give me 41,800 watts. Okay, so it says kilowatts there, again, 41.8 kilowatts, 41,800 watts. That's our demand load. So that's another typo that we have on the graphics there. I didn't make that one, so I don't blame me, but that's a demand load. Okay, what's our service demand for 40 5 kilowatt dryers? So see if you guys can work this one out. I got 40 5 kilowatt dryers. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can work it out. Okay, let's see how you did. Now, the tough part here is trying to figure out what the percentage is on there, right? And so we're going to go down to uh, 24 to 42. It says 35% minus a half a percent for, for dryers exceeding 23. So it's 35% minus a half a percent exceeding 23, right? So we've got 40 of them, right? 40 minus 23 is 17. It says for each one of those 17, pull off a half a percent. So 17 times a half a percent is going to be 8.5 percent. So it's going to be 35 minus 8.5 percent. That's going to give me 26.5 percent. All right. Now we take that information to the question here. Take a look at the graphic. And so we got 26.5 percent. And we're going to do that. I've got 45 kilowatt dryers in each unit, right? So 40 times 5 is 200 times my 26.5%. That's going to give me 53 kilowatts or 53,000 watts. Electric cooking equipment. Now all we're going to do is we're going to turn the page. We're going to go to page 78. And then we take a look at table 220.55 for our household cooking equipment. Remember column A's for appliances that are less than three, three and a half uh, kilowatts, and then B is for over three and a half kilowatts through eight and three quarter kilowatts, right? And then uh, column C is for up to 12 kilowatts. And then column C plus is, I'm going to add a percentage to column C. What's our service demand load for 10 eight kilowatt ranges? Well, Eight kilowatt ranges fall into what column? Column B, right? And so we go down in column B and we go down and it says 34. 34 what? Percent. Percent of what? 80 kilowatts. How did I get that? 10 times 8. That's 80 kilowatts. So I take my 80 kilowatts times 34 percent, that's 27.2 kilowatts or 27,200 watts. Okay? 
Now, take a look at column C. What does it say for 10 units? It says 25 kilowatts, right? Which one's smaller, 25 or 27.2? Uh, 25. So we'll use actually the smaller of the two, which is column C at 25 kilowatts. That's an interesting one, right? The smallest one we can do is actually our column C demand. What's our service demand load for 29 kilowatt ranges? 29 kilowatt ranges. We're going to go down to 20 ranges. We go over to 9 kilowatts. That's going to be column C, right? And it's a straight lookup. 35. 35 what? Kilowatts. Remember, column C is kilowatts. So a lot of you guys took a look at that and you're like, oh, 35%. Let's go. Let's do some math. Right? Didn't need to do any math. It's just a straight lookup. So 29 kilowatt ranges is 35. By the way, 20 12 kilowatt ranges is still 35, right? Now you probably look at that and you say, hey, that's not nearly enough. That's like three families worth, right? But really, if you're taking a look at multifamily, does everybody cook at the same time? Does everybody use every single burner on that stove at the same time, right? And the oven? So really, I mean, what we're looking at is we're looking at a situation where not all that stuff's going to be used all at the same time, um, even on the same stove, uh, let alone on every unit in the 20-unit multifamily dwelling building. I think these uh, numbers are a little bit uh, too lenient with the uh, demand factors, but the uh, question is, is what do you calculate on the exam? Not really what works in the field, right? Don't take any field knowledge into this thing because that field knowledge is going to get you in the way because you can do stuff better than what the code requires, right? So let's take a look at 40 10 kilowatt ranges. Now, 10 kilowatt ranges, that falls into column C, right? And so we take a look at that and column C. And what does column C says? It says 15 kilowatts plus 1 kilowatt for each range. How many ranges do we have? 40 of them, right? What's 40 plus 15? 55. So that's our total demand load there is 55 kilowatts. What's our service demand load for 20 14 kilowatt ranges? Okay, that's a little bit more complicated, right? So let's take a look up here. I've got 20 14 kilowatt ranges, right? So what does it say under uh, column C? So for 20 of them, it's got 35, right? So we'll keep that as kind of our base factor here, 35. And we'll call that 35,000, right? Because that's really what that is. But remember, that only works for 12 kilowatt ranges. What do we have? We've got 14 kilowatt ranges, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, how many kilowatts do we have over 12 kilowatts? I've got two. For each one of those, we're going to do that times five. That's going to be a 10% increase to column C. So we're going to take our 35,000 plus 10%. And that's going to give me 38,500. All right? So that's how you do those. You don't have to do 10% or a 5% uh, a increase for each individual range on the thing, just the, on the total ranges there. All right? So 10% uh, increase to column C in this circumstance will give us 38,500 or 38.5 kilowatts. All right, let's let you guys do one here. What's our service demand load for 40 14 kilowatt ranges? You guys go ahead and pause it and work that out. All right, let's see how you did here. So we got a 40 unit multifamily unit, and if we go down to number of units 40, we go to column C, it says give me 15 kilowatts or plus one kilowatt for each range, right? So we've got 40 ranges, 40 plus 15 is 55. That's fine, but that's only good for 12 kilowatts. We have 14 kilowatts on each range. So we're gonna have to increase by 10% our column C value. 
So 55 kilowatts uh, plus 10% or times 110% is going to give us 60.5 kilowatts or 60,500 watts. Hopefully you did well on that. Now putting this all together, um, we take a look at a apartment building here. And here we've got a 10 unit multifamily building having the following loads in each 1,000 square foot unit. The system is 120 slash 240 volt single phase. So again, I got a 10 unit multifamily dwelling. And each dwelling has a dishwasher. Each apartment has a dishwasher, a disposal, a water heater, a dryer, and a range, and air, air conditioning, and heat. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So we're going to need to do our square footage calculation. We're going to take our 1,000 square foot times 3 volt amps per square foot. That's 3,000. Plus our two small appliances. That's going to be um, 3,000. Plus our laundry is another 1,500. That's a total connected load per unit for the lighting and general appliances, or general uh, receptacle load, of uh, 7,500 volt amps. That's for one unit. We have 10 units, right? So we're going to have to go in and take a look at 10 units. So we take our 7,500 times 10, that's 75,000. Now from that, we're going to take our first 3,000 at 100%. That's going to be 3,000. And then we take our remaining 72,000, and we're going to do that at 35%. So no more difficult than doing a single family dwelling, right? We're just uh, applying a little bit different uh, rules and steps on the thing, right? So 72,000 at 35% is 25,200. So that gives us a total of 28,200. 28,200. And so we take a look here, and we take a look at our 10 units, and we've also got a dishwasher, a disposal, a water heater in each unit. So that's 6,600 total connected load. I got 10 units. 6,600 times 10 is 66,000. And because I have four or more appliances, we're going to do that at 75%. So that gives me 49,500 volt amps. And then dryers. We had a dryer in each unit, right? They were four kilowatt dryers. Really, we need five kilowatt dryers, right? And we're going to do that times 10, and then we take that to table 220.54, and it says, give me a 50% demand factor on that. So that's 25,000 watts. And then we take a look at our ranges. And each range is going to be eight kilowatts, right? And so we look in column B for 8 kilowatts. We go down to 10 appliances, and we got 34%. So we take our 8,000 times 10 is 80,000. We take that 80,000 times 34%. That's 27,200, right? And then we take a look at column C, and column C says, oh, no, 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 you can do 25 if you want. So we say, okay, I'm going to take the smaller of the two because we're trying to find the minimum size. And so that's going to be 25,000. And so we'll add that into our calculation. And then we take a look at our air conditioning versus heat. So I've got my air conditioning, draw 16.7 amps. At 240 volts, that's 4,008 volt amps. My 4,008 times 125% is going to be... Um, Okay, so on this one, we're going to have to take 125% of the first motor, right? And then we're going to have to do 9 units at 4,008. So we take a look at the total that we have on there, and we're going to have our, our 5,010 plus 36,072, and that gives us 4,082 volt amps. All right? And so we take a look at that versus are 6 kilowatts per unit times 10 units, that's 60 kilowatts. That's bigger than our air conditioning load, so we go ahead and take the heat. We get rid of the air conditioning and take the heat. 
So now we just add everything together. Our general lighting and receptacles, 28,200. Our fixed appliance demand load is 49,5. Our dryer is 25,000. Our electric cooking equipment was 25,000 because we took the smaller of column B and column C. And air conditioning versus heat, we took the heat because that was bigger, 60,000. So we end up with a total demand load of 187,700. If we divide that by our source voltage, 187,700 divided by 240, and that's 782 amps. If I go to 240.6, that's our size of our overcurrent devices, we're going to take a look and see what the next standard size up from that is. I had 782, right? And so it jumps from 700 to 800. We're going to go ahead and use 800 amp service on that. Okay? So that's simply how you do those. Okay? Kind of simple. Kind of complex all at the same time. Remember, NXD will show you step by step how to do this stuff. Okay? So if you get in a bind, you forget how to do it. If you didn't take notes on how to do that and stick that in the back of your book, that's okay. Uh, what you can do is you can um, uh, look at Annex D and it'll show you examples step by step how to do that. Now, why do I have you write notes in the blank sheets in the back of the book? Because the rules say you can bring in notes if you want to, okay? But they have to be in the book. And so there's some blank sheets back here. What if the proctor doesn't like what you have written in there? Can't I always just go like this? Just take my page and go, okay. I'm going to go ahead and tear that one out. Are you okay now? Right? Now I can still use the book. If I don't uh, do that, if I don't put it on the blank pages, stick it on one of my pages in Article 220 as I'm going through, then I'm going to get in trouble uh, because now I can't have to tear out pages that I actually need. Right? These are ones that are extras, just had some extra notes back there and stuff. Uh, the rules say that you can do that, but if they have a problem with that, and they say, oh, you can't use this book, it's got notes in it. Well, the notes are only on those blank pages, just go ahead and tear it out, right? You guys got probably freaked out because I tore this out of my book, right? No big deal. I got plenty of extra blank pages, all right? So that is how you do your standard method dwelling calculations. On a separate video, I will show you how to do the optional method. It is so much easier. Uh, but again, on the test, they're going to specify, I want you to do this using the standard method. Or I want you to do this using the optional method, all right?